Hello, good evening and welcome to another episode of EAO's Just Ask, your monthly live appointment with a leading expert in implant dentistry. My name is Garrett Heikop and I'm the host of this EEO channel and in this live video session we are going to try to answer all your questions about soft tissue grafting in the aesthetic zone in the last 30 years. And to do that I'm very honored to be joined tonight live from Switzerland by Uli Grunder. Uli, good evening. Good evening Gary, thank you very much. Good evening everybody. It's a, it's a great pleasure, great honor to have you here. You're a very, very experienced clinician for over more than 30 years. Uh, you wrote the book Implants in the Aesthetic Zone, a step-by-step -step treatment uh, strategy, 800 pages of textbook that uh, I guess everybody should read in dentistry. And those 30 years, uh, 30 years ago, you were one of the first to get started and to consider the aesthetics around implants and that also gave you 30 years to come across failures to learn from and I think that's a great basis to uh, start asking you questions on tonight. Um, let me explain to our audience, we are live, I can already see quite some people checking in as always. We have uh, Don Camillo joining us from Italy, we have Quico and Rele and Rile, I think, joining us from Spain, Per Ottestad, Per, good to see you back from Norway. We have Kay Satin from Venezuela, Doran Hatchwell from Israel and many more. And uh, besides loving to know where you are from tonight, I obviously look forward to your live questions to Uli as well. And I kind of kicked off the conversation by letting me know, could you drop in the live chat how many years of experience do you have in implant dentistry? Because maybe we can kind of relate to the 30 plus years that you have, Uli. Um, let's get started, I would say. Soft okay. tissue grafting. Uh, let's start with the very basis. Uh, how do we recognize a case that has an indication for soft tissue grafting? When do we know we need to consider this? Okay, well, there are different indications. Uh, let me share the screen with you. I will go here very quickly. And yeah, you've, you've brought some very nice uh, uh, pictures with you as well. In the meantime, we see uh, Rafa from Paris checking in, Victor from Moldova, Isabella from Italy, and also Philip from Paris live with us. Good evening to you all. Good Tell us, Uli. everybody. So, the most often indication we use is actually if we deal with implants in the aesthetic zone to gain volume, you know, and uh, I, I prepared a, an interesting case for you to show you what we can gain due to bone augmentation or soft tissue augmentation. And we make a, a little game. You can see we placed an implant that is missing bone in the buccal area. So we augment bone, which is not the topic tonight, and we get the bone six months later, okay? So it then seems that I augment already a lot of volume. But let's change a little bit uh, the pictures. So what you see here right now, actually this on the left, this is how we started the procedure. That means I opened the flap, but then as you can see below, I place the implant and the bone is missing. So I hmm. open the bone, patient comes back six months later and what we can see, well, look at the volume here, didn't really improve. I would say it's even worse, but underneath there is bone. So what mm -hmm. we can see is actually we don't gain much, it is a specific case, but in many cases it looks like this. We gained the bone volume, but we could not see it. And the fact is, maybe I come back on this later on, that not, nobody talks about that very often anymore uh, at the time, because when you extract the tooth, we lose bone, but most probably we also get a thinner soft tissue. So it's very obvious if we want to have a, a nice result, we have to add some soft tissue, as you can see here. And if we do so, look now how we can improve the volume. And I can show you the, the final result of this case. Now you can see that there is no shadow, there is no, rec no recession, nothing. And funny enough, I can show you, of course, we talked about having 30 years of experience, uh, I can show you the case after five years, 12 years, and 23 years. Well, we, we can see we get a discoloration on the natural tooth. It's root canal treated. But look at this, how stable this tissue is. So this is, I would say, the main indication for soft tissue grafting. Just another case, you can see two uh, adjacent teeth missing. Yes, thanks to bone augmentation, we gain volume. And with soft tissue augmentation, we gain more. We did a actually a, a case report. I, I call this a case report because it's just a few cases. It's not really a study. No statistics make sense. However, we, I, we could show more or less, and this is the clinical experience, that we gain, thanks to bone augmentation, a little bit more than 50%. 
of the volume we really need for aesthetics and 44% thanks to an additional soft tissue graft. So this is very important. And as I already mentioned before, look what happens. That's an interesting case. Immediate implant placement, this is an endless case. However, the interesting thing is, this is a day of implant placement. This is six months later. This is 10 years later. And look at the, the phenotype of this soft tissue. It's a thick phenotype. And 10 years later, we have a thin phenotype. So we have to realize that after tooth extraction, it's not just the bone that it absorbs. We see many, many cases, not in every case, in many cases, that the soft tissue becomes thinner and thinner. And we have to compensate for that. Another indication, of course, is exactly to uh, overcome the problem that we get see this soft tissue thinning over the years. So when we do immediate implants, routinely we always place a soft tissue graft, always. So we overcontour it at the moment, so we can change the case from here to a final result like this. Not in a very nice the neighboring tooth. However, later on, the referral dentist made a crown. Look at this: fifteen years. It's still there. So we get very stable situation for single tooth replacement if we do soft tissue graft. The third indication, of course, a very important one, to get rid of scar tissue. Look at this scar tissue. This is terrible tissue to work with. So the first we have to do with some soft tissue graft, this is a pedicle graft, for example, get rid of this scar tissue. It, it would take a lot of time to talk about all these details. However, we have to understand that with a second procedure, we, we still have had some scar tissue, two soft tissue grafts, and this is how it looks like. And we should not start placing implant augmenting bone, what we did later on, as you can see here, before we don't not we did not uh, eliminate all the scar tissue. Because if you look at the final result, this is how we started. This is the final result. The main work here, or the most important work, was actually really the soft tissue grafting. So this is a very important indication. It's just not, just not a little case. Look at this. You have a scar tissue, three millimeter deep, no blood supply. If you leave this, you will see it at the very end. So remove it, do an inlay graft. We might talk about an inlay graft later on, depends. However, if you look at this, here was the scar tissue, here's the graft, it's gone. So get rid of scar tissue. And last but not least, to solve problems. We, you know, it's not 30 years of uh, experience, it's 30 years of struggling with all kinds of problems. And if you have a problem like this, no keratinized mucosa, look at this, this is the implant shoulder, these are the shining through, cover screw. Then you have to have some ideas, such as, as here we, are, here I did a tubepidelium connective tissue graft, here I did an inlay graft, you might talk about this, and you can change the case from here to here. It will never be perfect, but look at the front view from here to here. We really improved it. We have healthy tissue. So yes, soft tissue grafts are very important, whatever indication we have. Exactly. Well, this goes very, very fast. And I invite our audience that if it goes a little bit too fast, make sure you make use of the fact that we are live. Type your questions in the chat to clarify or to go deeper into a specific topic. Um, I was taking notes, Uli. So basically you say there's an indication for soft tissue grafting in case we need more volume and we do bone augmentation. Your point was when you do bone augmentation, always do a soft tissue grafting as well. Did I understand that correctly? Absolutely. We started this in 90, well, the, the oldest cases I can show 1991, 1992. We learned that bone augmentation and soft tissue augmentation in the aesthetic zone both is needed. In Go most, hand in hand. Almost every case we do that. Routinely. Exactly. And in the other case, it's, it's either to anticipate the uh, soft tissue becoming thinner over time or when you are dealing with scar tissue. Those are, those are the main indications right. when you want to do this. Right. So are there the, any... The, the immediate implant cases, all immediate implant cases get a soft tissue graft, you know, always. Exactly. Well, you, me you mentioned immediate. Uh, in this case, you talk about immediate implant placement. Yes. Is there, what, what is the most important thing to understand about the timing of this soft tissue grafting? Do we always do this at extraction, at uh, implant placement? What, are the best, what is the best option in your experience and, and, and what do we need to consider? As always, it depends. Let's go and see. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's a case by case. It's, a, I guess, with this whole field of implant dentistry, it it's depends always. a lot on the cases. In the meantime, we have a, a broader audience checking in, both from Turkey. Ilker is here. Lena is joining us from Palestine, and also Franz Joseph Strauss is checking in from Zurich. Good evening to you all, and make sure you use the opportunity uh, to uh, ask your questions live to Uli Gunder. 
Uli, okay. you are pulling up some images, but at the moment yes. we are looking at your finder screen and not yet at the uh, at the nice images you have in store for us. So let's see if we can make sure uh, you get that in front, because we uh, decided to kind of get the conversation started. No, 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 no. no. Oh. We're seeing we're seeing the wrong screen. We see uh, not yet uh, your photos. So let's see if we can pull those up. Okay, okay. Let me go back. I'll do it one this more is, time. Is this what you? Yeah. Well, let me go in here. Oh, you can, can. Exactly. Now we're uh, landing on the right page. So when you pull it uh, okay. in full, we can talk a little bit about timing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I must yeah. go back on this. Now it should work, I hope. Exactly. There we Does are. It? Time points. So what do we know? need to know about timing before we dive deep? Okay. So there are different time points when we need it. And that, a very important thing is that everybody talks about uh, rich preservation. If we do something at the time of tooth extraction in the aesthetic zone, my personal feeling is we should not do rich preservation. If we want to do thing, something positive, we should do rich augmentation. You know, rich preservation, we all know we can maintain the rich to a certain amount, but never perfectly. But on the other hand, what we do with immediate implants as well, you know, if I extract the tooth and I place a subepithelial connective tissue graft with a tunnel technique, look at this. You can add some xenograft or not. This is not so important, in fact. And I augment it. You can see over contour it. We augment it. This is what we should do, actually. Then we can make sure, look at the healing. This is the healing after eight weeks. We have beautiful soft tissue. And now you can go on and place your implant, augment bone whatsoever. So my feeling is in the aesthetic zone, if we extract the tooth, normally I don't do anything. If I want to do something positive, then it's really augmenting with soft tissue. And then you can go on, place the implant. It is the final result of this case. So at the time of tooth extraction, it can be an indication. We already talked about the immediate. And uh, before you rush on, uh, Uli, just to make sure I really understand, you say I do this in cases where I want a little bit more soft tissue volume. There's not enough for bone augmentation needed, but uh, at point of extraction, I do, uh, I, I put a soft tissue graft in to create more volume later on. Yes, but I, I, I don't do it routinely, but it's one of the options we have. So mm -hmm. the other we already talked about, you know, even if I have very thin soft tissue, this is a very delicate case here where I have to extract the front tooth, but everything is intact. We talked about immediate implant placement. I place my implant, like you can see, and I augment the soft tissue. It's also at the time of tooth extraction and the implant placement, we do the soft tissue grafting. And here we are, we allow for healing. And here you can see, we can change the case from something like this teeth two still in place and later on we have the implant so maintain we, but that means we augment the soft tissue we know that we see some shrinkage and we end up just with the right amount of uh, tissue mm -hmm. already discussed this before we place an implant time point if you have scar tissue do this as a first step it's a very important message don't try to do this later on you have no chance so soft tissue graft we change the soft tissue you can also see the occlusal view and if you see what we do later on this is not the topic but i have good soft tissue to work with i have good blood supply because i don't have this scar tissue anymore i don't have uh, areas where it's very thin soft tissue and we get all this good healing of the bone augmentation of the soft tissue augmentation and again look at this get rid of the scar tissue as a first step and you might be able not the perfect result but a very acceptable result if you compare where you come from and if you if you help me understand the the timing on this, when when you do such a procedure, when you remove scar tissue, you do soft tissue first. Uh, you let it first heal completely, or how much yes. time is there between the augmentation or the soft tissue grafting and the uh, final implant uh, procedure? Well, in, in this case, is we wait six to eight weeks. Yes, we wait. Yeah. Yeah. My main message is don't think about bone augmentation as long as, as long as you have scar tissue, because this is. The most difficult step to get rid of the scar tissue, do it as a first step. That's the time point. Clear. The, as I already mentioned, you know, the time point to gain more volume in most of the cases, it goes like this. We place the implant of the soft tissue healing of eight weeks, augmentation. And then after six months, when we reopen it, you know, that's how it looks like. You can see the membrane is shining through very thin soft tissue. This is the membrane. When we remove this membrane, and I love to work with this non resorbable membrane because I get the best bone you can have. You can see the bone here. So I have to remove the membrane. I have to remove some bone on top of my cover screw because there was extra bone. And then we do the soft tissue grafting. But 
there's another important message. If I do my soft tissue grafting, when I remove the membrane, I always close the flap one more time, perfectly close your, allow for soft tissue healing. And this is four weeks. And after four weeks, we do the second stage procedure. We never make an incision anywhere for a second stage procedure in the papilla area because we would lose papilla height if we make an incision, have to suture here. So we work with pressure. It's another topic. But I think it's very important to understand of the soft tissue grafting at the time of remembering removal, never do simultaneously the second stage procedure because we have to work with healthy soft tissue when you do the second stage procedure and then you get an uh, acceptable result. Last but not least, we need the soft tissue grafting also for late failures, very important, mm -hmm. such as this. What, what, what does late... What does late mean in this context? Because timing is cases, a different topic in all different phases. Well, if we finish the case and at the recall, this one is 19 years after I finished the case. That's all exactly, I, exactly. I so it, it's a failure way beyond uh, the first procedure. Right. We finished the yeah. case. We're happy. The patient had paid. So then, then you start the late failures. Like this is an immediate implant we placed with no soft tissue grafting, and 19 years later, here's a perforation. Okay, then that that's very delicate, especially if we have this very thin soft tissue. Then in this particular case, we did the technique described by Homa Sade, very nice technique. That's the vestibular incision, uh, the vista technique, so called. You know, we don't go into into this area. The, the tissue is too thin. The blood supply would not be enough. So we come from. A, the distal part, we tunnel it and we place some graft. I just will show you the indication mainly or the time point that we have. We can close it. You know, the, here is the opening of the, the flap. And this is how it looks like two years later. So that's where we start and that's what we do. So late failures with soft tissue, yes, is a good indication with different techniques to solve these problems. Exactly. Wow. Again, a, a very fast overview about uh, the different timing points. And that also triggered some uh, first questions in the live chat as well. So uh, let me just throw uh, some curveballs at you, Uli, and uh, let's see what happens. The first one is from Safia Khan. Uh, and I think uh, you've already answered this, but it went really fast. The question reads, what is your opinion about rich preservation with bone and soft tissue augmentation both? Well, I think that was already briefly mentioned when you yeah. talked about the indications, well, I, but... I think the bone uh, soft tissue augmentation, but we talk about augmentation, not just a, a punch graft, which should maintain the soft tissue augmentation is much more Im important than placing any xenograft, anything in, in the extraction side. But if we do it, and if we look at the studies by Araujo and co-workers, it might be a benefit. So I, I placed some, some xenograft there as well. It seems to be a benefit, but more important is the soft tissue, I think. Aha, that's the most important, you say, to uh, to get to the results that you desire. Yes. Exactly. Uh, some more. Uh, listen carefully. Victor Pallery writes the following question. Which technique is more recommended for soft tissue augmentation around immediate slash delayed implant placement? And then he comes. Harvested from the pellet or tuberosity? or acellular dermal matrix, collagen matrix, et cetera. So this is more about, I think, the harvesting or the type of soft graft that you would like to use. Any okay. recommendations there? Well, I must say allograft, I don't have much experience by myself, so I cannot answer if I say it's not working. The xenograft I tried and in my hand, it didn't work. And I think we all agree, or maybe it needs more experience. More thing. We we don't get the same results. I I did give, I got very poor results. However, uh, and the gold standard is autograft. How to harvest? Mm -hmm. I can explain you in detail. You shall I do it, or are there more questions? Yeah, why not? I saved the question from Isabella and Stefan uh, to uh, I, I put them on the shelf for a minute because I am aware that when we uh, we talked, you prepared uh, quite some clinical pictures to really make this conversation come alive, and we kind of anticipated a question on the topic of uh, uh, the, the place of grafting as well. So uh, let's uh, jump straight into that one. Uh, what is the, the favorite position or the differences between the different places of uh, grafting? Uh, I think you need to hit the play button on the graft harvesting because I still see your... There you go. Yeah. You want to see it? Here we have okay. it. Yes. Oh, good. Shall I go with, I go with that? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. Now... The first question is where we should we take our graft uh, in which yes. area? You know, we have the tuberosity graft or the lateral palate graft. Now, the fact is, 
we all know in the tuberosity graph, we think we get the best quality. You will see we a lot of things we don't know. But unfortunately, in my case is most often the tuberosity that does not give me enough volume I need. So it's most often it's not a question at all whether that makes sense because yes, I have we don't have so much tissue available in the tuberosity. So in most of the cases, we go to the lateral palate actually to harvest it. There is one case report, well, whether it makes sense or not. You know, I should always show you the case report, the publications that, that fits in my program and the other one I don't show. That's how what we all do. <laughs> However, That's how science works, right? In these kind we of We all places. do that, you know. So uh, it, it's not fair. I do it anyway. <laughs> you can see and we also and the co-worker data really showed it does not make any difference at, uh, to the final result where you take it. I think it makes a difference what we get. No, the soft tissue quality and quantity. We think, we think that we should have as much as possible connective tissue graft. And that's, we call this good quality without really knowing all the details. So we would like to see this. But if you look at the deeper we go, the less we have connective tissue, the more we have fat tissue. We all know that we have glandular duct. So we think we should eliminate this. Do we really know? I'm not so sure. Do we know whether we leave, even leave a periosteum in it? If we go down to the bone, does it make a difference? I think we don't know. At least I don't know. So harvesting goes very quickly with this. You, you know this. So it's one uh, incision. This is what the, the routine procedure was in the past always. I will show you something di uh, different, how we can do it. So we split it. Uh, it's only one horizontal incision is needed. It's a it's a rather quick procedure. And important is if you are afraid of taking it out, if you stay at the first molar, more or less in the middle of the first molar, you don't go further distal. You nor you should not have any problem with the arteria that is available here. So this is a quick procedure. You can harvest a lot of tissue. And that it gives you the advice to take all this big soft tissue graft for what we need augmentation. So this is this is actually the uh, routine procedure. However, that, that's an it, important by sentence, by the way. Eh? You say your advice is to always take big. You say yes. or bigger? Big. I take big grafts. Why? Because if that place them somewhere, it's always a question of blood supply. The bigger mm -hmm. the surface, the more blood supply I have. You know, and the less I see the shrinkage. The problem really is if we have a very thin soft tissue av or available at the la lateral palate, and you know, we have to, uh, this technique, this, we can take a full sickness graft. Here is a full sickness graft. We take everything we need as deep as we want to go. We can go through the entire uh, thickness. And then this was described by Giovanni Zucchelli very nicely, deep utilizes outside of the patient's mouth, okay? But this is a procedure that is not so easy to do it perfectly. You know, you have to make sure that you get rid of all the, uh, the epithelium. We don't really know what happens if we want to augment volume, if we, if we have some epithelium left here. So it's not an easy procedure and it takes some time. And I'm, I'm a lazy guy. I want to go very fast with everything and, and make sure that it works. So uh, by the way, there are two case reports that show whether you, you also can de-epitalize with, with, a, with a burr, with a diamond, or with a blade, as Giovanni Zucchelli shows. But the risk that you leave some epithelium back is, is rather high, as you can see here. So there's a mm -hmm. technique which I use and, and I have promoted. We use this mucotome. This was an instrument developed by Mr. Merman. In 1977, you see, I was not a dentist there, but the, the tool was already available. And with this, it, it was actually developed to do free changeable grafts. But look what we can do with this little machine. We can de-epithelize it perfectly in the patient's mouth. You have full control that there is no perforation. So you know 100%. You don't let any epithelium back on it. And we do this as a first and then... Yeah, then it's easy. Then you can harvest as, as much as you want, go down to the bone or split or whatever. You have a big defect later on. You can fill it in with a collagen block. Sometimes we need sutures. And then I love to glue it and everything is done. So it's a very quick procedure. And what I get is actually, look at this. This is the free changeful graft. You don't need this. And the thickness is exactly 0.8 millimeter. And then I can take as much as still is available or where I need of connective tissue graft. And if you look what what we actually have here, this is the this is the histology done by Peter Schipbach, beautiful. So this is the free changeable graft, this is the connective tissue graft in the knees. And what we see or what we know, this study is specifically done by Joe and co-worker from the lateral palate. 
we know that the epithelium thickness is between 0 0.3, 0 0.4 millimeter. Then comes the lamina propria, one, one to three millimeter. And we have 0 0.8 millimeters, it's pretty much standardized. So we have some part of the lamina propria. Is it important? We don't know. But we get great quality with, with this without going very deep. Just a very quick video. It's not a great video. We can see we have to look at very quickly. Here we start. Here we go. The epithelized area. And it's done. I love speed. And look at this. Perfect control. No perforation. And you already know I can huge, huge soft tissue graft harvest. This is the epithelium part. We don't need this. And we can augment a lot of tissue, as in this case, just we can go through this very quickly. We can change 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 the case with a huge defect to an average defect and later on place implants and go on. So this is all I want to tell you I'm about. Just, uh, I'm just pleasantly surprised that uh, in uh, the year 2022, you are celebrating a tool that, if I counted correctly, is 45 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's, so, uh, it's very this, well illustrated. This is always interesting. Look back what happened. Many things exactly. we tried in the past they didn't work, they try again, and they don't work either. <laughs> that didn't change. <laughs> exactly, but the good stuff you can still uh, use Sometimes. and replicate. Yes. I, I skip a few questions, don't worry. No, I, I've good. seen the question because there's a live question coming in about uh, uh, the, the different grafts uh, locations that uh, that we're talking about right now. Um, unfortunately, these letters are in a, in, a, in a type I cannot read, but so no name for you. But uh, the question reads, what about thickness of the graft from the tuberosity? Can it be too fat, it reads? You, you already mentioned we're not sure what fat does or means. Is this something you consider? Well, I, I think the question is not about fat in the tuberosity. Because in tuberosity, normally we don't see fat. We see it on the lateral palate. Too thick, most probably. Can it be too thick? We don't know. It can be too thick regarding blood supply. Yes, if you have a, if you have a very thick but not a white uh, graft, I think we have a problem regarding blood supply. That's why I take big ones. Do we have a limitation if we take big grafts, which is most probably not possible from the tuberosity, but if we could, do we have limitations? Well, thinking about the blood supply, the, the, the type of healing, we might have some, some limitations, but do we really know? I don't think we really know. No, and, and, and from all your years of experience, you don't recognize this to be a big issue. Do I understand correctly? Well, I you say I, we don't know officially, but yes. you haven't run into the, the problem. No, but you know, normally my graphs, they have a thickness. Let's say the thickest graft is something like three millimeter, which already is very thick. So if you go below, if you have a chance to take exactly. more, I'm not sure whether it's still good. No I reason to go experience there. Experience with the grafts up to five millimeter thickness, I don't have it. Exactly. The question was submitted by uh, Victor Fedina, he uh, just asked. So uh, thank you for that, uh, um, uh, Victor. Again, more questions on the harvesting. Laura Bay Bayari writes, do you always use a splint for the pellet, uh, pellet after harvesting? That's the question. Well, no. First of all, most of my cases, they have removable temporaries and they work as a splint. That's the best one I can have. But I never prepare one. But if you do, it's good. If you don't have, if you have a, a glue in it, like a, a adhesive bridge as a temporary, and you make a splint, it's nice for the patient. Mo I, I never prepare it because most often I have one. And if not, you know, I, I try to make sure that with the collagen plug, if they, Collagen plug had also the effect that bleeding stops, and with gluing, I can make more or less keep it perfect as it is. But if you make a splint, it's nice for the patients if you don't have a removal temporary. And I, I sense by the way you talk about it, it's nice for the patient, but you don't make it seem like that's an important decision driver for you, uh, Uli. Well, I want to have every simple, you know, it, it heals without, it, it's, it's healing, it's no problem. Yeah, but I would say in in more, in 95%, I have a removal temporary, and that works like a spin. Explain. That works like the splint. Okay, perfect. Uh, let me scroll back a little bit to all the questions I skipped at the moment. And uh, the, the live Q&A is really uh, getting started. So uh, I'm very happy to see that to our live audience as well. Um, in this way, we in this uh, question, we scroll a little bit back to the case you just saw uh, showed when we talked about time points. And we talked about the late failure where there was the, the thin and the shine through happening. Lina Kayal is writing, in the case of the implant exposure of the case that was displayed, 
what was the cause and when do we need to do only soft tissue graft without bone to cover the exposure and could there be any re-exposure so i guess the question from lena is can, can you color in a little bit more about uh, what we saw there well what is the cause in this particular case most probably the cause was that after immediate implant placement and it was already a thin biotype the bone gets resorbed, that the soft tissue became thinner, and then I had this perforation. Well, what so I, I guess I to, to, to your first uh, message about the yeah. importance of soft tissue grafting at yeah. the aesthetic zone, right. the cause was probably someone didn't graft a soft tissue at the implant placement, right? It was me. I show you oh, my it own. It was your own case. It was me. I'm fair enough to show you my own mistake. I have one, <laughs> okay. mistake, one failure from other one. Normally, I show my own one because okay. yeah, that's what happened. Perfect. Well, there was so many years ago, we didn't do it. And the fact is, you know, does it make to augment bone? This is a, it's an old crown, 19 years old. It's a semantic crown. I cannot take it off. What can I do? So the only way to get access without dis destroying more tissue is actually from the lateral side. And I cannot augment bone this way. Ad additionally, if I have a perforation in the soft tissue, I have no chance to do the bone augmentation. You know, I should have a perfect uh, closed soft tissue. So the only option I had, it was just one example. We have other, other problems, uh, late failures. However, in this case, the only option there was to do it with soft tissue. Can it happen again? Most probably not. I, I will, uh, maybe we have a chance to show you some long-term results. This soft yep. tissue is in many cases, very stable and sometimes too stable, you will see. Exactly. We have uh, we have some topics prepared. We get to that in a moment. I see a question lining up for that as well. But first, I want to go back to chronological uh, order. A very technical question by our own Isabella Rocchietta. She writes, can you show us, I, I'm not sure if we have prepared that or not, but can you show us your protocol to shift the mucogingival line back into its original apical position? Uh, yeah, I can. <laughs> but I have. Let me go back. I show you at least. I I, I show it. Let's let's do the the following. Yeah, uh, based on an image you have uh, nearby. Uh, yeah. uh, wait. I I think I don't. In the it. meantime, uh, let you me give, also. Give me uh, time. You talk with the people. You give me I, time. I talk with the people. I read the questions. Well, if you are just joining us, we are in our EAO. Just ask with Uli Grunder. We're talking about thirty years of experience in soft tissue grafting, all the things he learned. And uh, it's, it's a nice mix where uh, Uli and I have prepared some topics that we would like to show you some clinical uh, uh, pictures about and some cases. And at the same time, there's a lot of live questions coming in. And I even have a little bit of a backlash of questions that are still going to be coming up. So Stefan Beans, I've seen your questions. Nice. And also, uh, uh, Victor, uh, it's coming up. Um, at the moment, Uli, we're looking at the finder window again and not at, uh, at uh, no, I have to the find it. No, this Ah, you're still searching. Okay. It's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's somewhere in, in a course, <laughs> and I'll find it. You know, it's like Isabella. It's, you should have given us a head up on this one, eh? but uh, it's uh, it's a nice and, and important question, and I think uh, you will find it. In I the meantime, uh, Poyan Quo is also uh, submitting more questions. Let me uh, give you all this little promise. We won't stop until uh, well, at some point we will stop. But uh, okay. all these questions, I will definitely uh, pitch you, to Rudy as can well. Can you see it? No, not yet. We're looking at the finder window, so you need to make sure you share the, the okay, keynote. Uh, no, Isabella, it's all good. It's coming. There you Isabella, go. So, Isabella, you have to I, I'm happy to share it with you. It's, uh, it's an interesting... It's coming up. It's so we're going to talk about how we question. can uh, push the mucogenital line back into its original epical position. Now you can see it, right? Yes. Okay. If we do it What wrong, are we looking at? Well, if we do a second stage procedure, it's, it has nothing to do with it, just to give it an idea. And we do it wrong. We make a raise a flap. We can never close the flap because we have never the blood supply here perfectly, you know, and you lose the papilla. And so this has a lot to do. If we do two together, it's even worse. So mm -hmm. we can try everything to make it happen. Now I come to your, your question. This is how we do it. Bone augmentation, soft tissues here. Then yeah. It's a bone, then we do a soft tissue graft, okay? We close it, I mentioned before, and now here it comes, you know? Like, well, are, we are, are, we, are we looking at the right pictures, uh, Uli? Because I'm still looking at the abutment connection slide, and I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying a, to follow what you're talking about. Abutment connection. It's at the time exactly. of abutment connection. Well, I, I can okay. go further, you know, I can show you the case which is more important. Okay, here. Now, this is a case where we augment bone and we lose the keratinized mucosa. Uh, wait, wait a second, I think we're not... Mentioning. 
Can Uli, you see? Are we looking? No, we're not looking at the thing you want to show us, I think, because we look what? at a abutment connection, limited punch technique. Yeah, yeah, it comes. That's it. Okay. So, okay, I'll let the, you run. The reason why this question comes up is actually yeah. that we, we lose the keratinized mucosa. Is it correct, Isabella? I think. So I think what so. we do at second stage procedure, we we don't we don't regain it with any graft. We gain it by pushing the soft tissue. Wake a tiny little hole on the palatal side, look at this, push it forward and place a healing post. We just displace the soft tissue. I think this is what Isabella wants to see. There is the keratinized mucosa. This is the result of the surgery. Uh, the, the, way I, the, the reason why I'm struggling, Uli, is that I do not see your mouse. I'm not sure what you're pointing at. So could you please reshare your screen one more time and make sure that we, uh, okay. that we see everything you want to show us? Because it's a pity if you... Uh, uh, Isabella says, yes, this is the reason why she asked the question. So uh, yeah. let's uh, take it step by step. We're live. Can you, uh, so can we've you proven that. Yeah, can you see it now? Do you have the pictures? Do you have no, my mouse? No, we have no. nothing. We just have you. So you go hit the screen share. Make sure you uh, share your entire screen. And I screen think free. Uh, we should be good. Do it here. Try one more time. You see it now? There we go. Yeah, we see. see my yes. mouse? Okay. Uh, so, no, unfortunately not? not. So you have to talk us through. Where where do, should we look? But you see the picture? Yeah, I see your mouse now, but uh, not when you uh, start the keynote. So uh, you okay. you don't have a pointer for us. No. However, you know, the result of the surgical procedure is that we lose keratinized mucosa. We shift it. Here you can see that what we how we shift it back. You know, we make a little incision on the palatal side. We push it further buckle and then we push the healing post in. And if you look at the front view, this is on, on left. I, I mentioned on left, we have had yep. it, the keratinized mucosa. In the middle, you can see we lose it due to the fact that we augment everything uh, bone and yeah. soft tissue and then how we can push it back i can give you a couple you see how the soft tissue now you have the black the black ones right yeah you can see how we change it so i can show you a lot of cases just by pushing it back after surgery left in the middle how we push it further buckley and then it's back i can go you show you a lot of these cases we have no keratinized mucosa we have it back this is one thing that just goes on and i can show you let, let me let me now I, I show you uh, the, one of the technique we if we do uh, if we have multiple teeth because then it's then it's different again. I must skip this now. I, I missed up all my, <laughs> but it's okay. We have time. I, we? I love the chaos. Thank you very much, Isabel. Yeah, for sure. Okay, it's it's okay. Live. here we go. But here we go. Okay. I hope we go because somehow. There's something in our practice when we were screen sharing. Uh, somehow we're not seeing your full screen when you share your screen. So uh, you we, we look see at it? certain windows. No, no, no. Okay. We look at windows, but not at uh, at the entire screen. So when you go to screen share, please make sure you share your entire go screen. Back and then we should here, share, share your screen. And then after that, I go back to uh, Stefan Beans's questions. Let's see how far we Stefan. get. Hello, Stefan. Yeah, we see the keynote now. And we go into play. Yes, soft tissue augmentation, inlay graft technique. Yeah. That's where we are now. So the question is, in more complex cases, and this is one of the techniques for grafting, you know, augmentation is just why we why we need it. So we actually start with, can you see the, the, the pointer also? Yeah, yeah, okay. now it's back. I don't know why, but... Uh, okay, uh, we, yeah. we start with existing soft uh, keratinized mucosa. We mobilize the flap and then we lose the keratinized mucosa. Now we could do... Uh, normal free change graft that look horrible. Now we do exactly the same as I showed you for a single tooth replacement. We make the incision on the palatal side, but we make it, it, it also in the pontic area. It's important, we, we talk about pontic areas and we push everything forward and more in the vestibulum. So now we do any, a full thickness graft, I call this an inlay graft. You take a full thickness graft from the lateral palate, you see this, it's six, seven millimeter thick, including the epithelium. It's a full thickness graft. We place it in this defect we have had because we pushed everything forward, as you know, with a special suture. It takes too much time to explain it, however. And then you can see how it heals. And this is the final result. Now I can show you, this is how we start. Uli, I'm going to interrupt you again, because somehow something is going wrong. When you say this is the final result, I'm still looking at the first slide. So somehow you are not oh. advancing or I don't know what's happening. Uh, you're not clicking yeah. on the thing. I'm still looking at the first starting situation. And now that's where still, we're left. You still, you still can yeah. see it. I, I I cannot see what you are doing on your end. But uh, we started on that slide, and that's where we stayed all the time. Oh, that's bad. 
Yeah, so, exactly. Now, now you still have <laughs> the same. Talk, yeah, no, we now see the keynote window. So why don't uh, don't you talk us through uh, like this? Okay, we go like this, huh? Yeah, Here please. you can see how we started with the keratinized mucosa. This yeah. is of the third tree. We lose the keratinized exactly. mucosa. Okay, we do it like this. I go down. We make then for second stage procedure the incision on the palatal side. We push all the keratinized mucosa further buccally and in the vestibulum. Then we have a defect here between the two implants. Only use it for pontic areas. We harvest the full thickness graft on the lateral palate. Thickness six to seven millimeter, including epithelium. Then we have a special type of suturing to stabilize it, to adaptation. You know, this is the inner graft, as you can see. And mm -hmm. then that's how it heals. Now I can show you the final result and what is very important to see. This is after the surgical procedure prior to second stage procedure. We have a lack of keratinized mucosa. Final result, five years. Look how much we look how much we can gain. Let me go to this one. So we have a lack of keratinized mucosa. We have it back. No discoloration just by pushing. I think this was the question. Inlay graft in these cases is the key factor. That's the key oh. factor of the protocol. Well, Isabella, yes. uh, thank you for proving to the entire world that we are super alive. <laughs> Uri, thank you for pushing through and together we'll make this yeah. happening. Uh, thank you, Isabella, for the question. Let me scroll a little bit back because we have uh, a little backlash of questions. Uh, you already referred to uh, a remarkable long-term results, Uri. And uh, oh. I think Stefan Beans's question is really tied into that. He says, what is your feeling about predictability of the augmentations. And then he says, referring to the 2011 publication with three cases also having limited gain from soft tissue augmentation. Well, I don't know where Stefan, Stefan is, uh, I know him very well. And uh, it's an interesting question, what, which three cases is, is asking for. But predictability, I think that, that's interesting. I try to share the screen one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Which obviously I'll, not okay, so I'll, I'll hold your hand and I'll try to okay. uh, make sure that we see the right thing. It worked in the beginning. Here we go. So let's see if we go back. Oh, I'm I not sure if I'm seeing the right thing yet. We okay. practiced this so many times, but uh, once we're live, the ball is rolling and we keep, uh, keep, Can you see something? keep everything on track. No, we see the finder window only. Okay, so, I'll uh, do, I go one more time. We, we will exactly. Get we'll stick with you and we'll get there. Yeah. Okay, free. Uh, and now there you go. This is the long term. And now uh, let's yeah. hope. And if you do long a term. click, let's see if I get the, the next one. Are okay. you clicking? Now I go to the next one. Exactly. Well, we are not. So let's do it uh, the last time we, we did it around. Yes. So just show okay. us in the, in the main I screen. Yes, we see this screen. I yeah. can make it a little bit easier. Like exactly. So Perfect. Blow it up a little bit so we can still uh, see, can see it. it. Yes. Here we go. Okay. So long term predictability. That's a very interesting question. First of all, predictably, how we augment short term, it's, I think it's pretty much predictable that we reach what we want to have. But the long term is interesting because working so many years in the office, well, it's very interesting. And I will confuse you. I'm sorry to say that because I start with the first case. Look at this case where we had a it's a case from 1994, I can read. 1994, yes. And I made a big mistake. It's my mistake again, you know. Uh, non dissolved membrane, after I placed my membrane, everything, I placed a full, full denture pressure, and then I get an exposure. I had to remove the membrane. And this actually is the result. These are not healing posts. These are the cover screws. So you can see here that the implant shoulders are almost exposed. So I decided only to do a soft tissue graft in this particular area here because it looks the worst. So you can see these implants, the two implants here upper left canine area, do a soft tissue graft only here. And here is already, let me go back. Here is already the final result. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, can you see, Gary, can you see the graph? Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah, see Gary. the final result in 1994, right? Yeah. So this tell is- Tell me, Gary, like, where, where can you see the graph? Can you see it? Where can I see the graft? Uh, oh, I place it here. Can you see a difference between <laughs> the right and left? No, not no. much, eh? You, no. you know why? You Good know why? question. Yeah. yeah. Because you're not patient enough. Ah, Let's wait 20 okay. years, okay? Yeah. Now I go a little bit faster than we wait 20 years. And then we go on. Let me, let me show you this. Can you see the graph now? Yeah, very clearly. Yeah. So what happened? Nobody knows. We placed the graft. It was not visible. And then we waited 20 years. And then here we go. It grows. Soft tissue in some cases starts growing. And this you is... You say in some cases. Yes. 
And so we this don't is not a, a, a consistent, predictable feature no. that we get in all soft tissue uh, graphs. Well, from my clinic over over yeah. over long term, eh? Over long term. Over long term. And I can show you, of course, I'm always curious. That's how we started. That's how it looks like after 20 years. So I yeah. have a little piece here, and Peter Schupach is the histology. And I tell you, this is almost one centimeter thick. And he mm -hmm. looked at the, all the details. I don't know. However, he was thinking maybe there are some inflammation cells, but we were not sure. And look at this. This is a say another case in 1990. Same case or another case? Other no, case. another case, but same year, just the same year. We mm -hmm. did bone augmentation and soft tissue augmentation. And if you look at this case, how we finished the case, 1994, I can show you the result after 5, 10, 20 years and the smile line after 25 years. Any growing of the soft tissue? No. Why? Uh -huh. We don't uh -huh. know. But I come back on this. So we have other cases, and, and this is this is actually a problem today well, we, because we don't know. We do bone augmentation and then soft tissue augmentation in this case. And I can show you how it, we finished it. There is no papilla, even if we did a soft tissue graft here. Now, what happens in this case, we have a nice papilla after five years. Bingo. Huh? Great. But unfortunately- It's the same case. Same case. But unfortunately, we can wait longer. And then it doesn't look good anymore. We have ah. a problem. This is 10 years. And look at this, 15 years. It's becoming worse and worse. It's car tissue. So this is, this is kind of runoff soft tissue uh, almost. Yeah. Huh? And we, do, we don't know when it happens. We don't know what really happens. It can be an advantage. It can be a disadvantage. Look at the single tooth replacement with the soft tissue graft. This is how I finished the case. Five years later, it started growing. I can show you the case. Let me go down here. Fifth, 13 years later, look at this. It starts mm -hmm. growing. Every case? No. It's immediate implant placement, soft tissue graft. This is how it looks like 14 years later. It doesn't grow. I can show you. So, within, like, we don't know. Can you, can you help us understand, uh, like in, in, in a ballpark figure, out of, out of the 10 or out of the 100 cases, how often do you see this happen over the long term? Well, in a single case, we see it very rarely. In more very complex rare. cases, and especially in this, let me quickly show this, because these cases I see most often. So it makes us thinking what, what part of the soft tissue might be important. But then we, we try to, to figure out whether this is the reality from clinical point of view. And then we see another mm -hmm. case where it's different. This is an inlay graft, full sickness graft. I showed you before how we can regain keratinized mucosa, okay? This is how we can regain keratinized mucosa with the inlay graft finished 10 years later. Look at that, 12 years later. Look at this, same graft. Yeah. And then of course the occlusal view and I, we took it from the lateral palate because we were thinking, do we take it from the tuberosity lateral palate? It doesn't uh, depend where we take yeah, it. Yeah, would that be an indication on, on why this happened or not? I, from the clinical point of view, I could not find out yet. And in this case, of course, I harvested a little piece here and it's one point two centimeter thick meanwhile. And if we do the histology, it's perfect healthy tissue, just a lot of connective tissue. This has a normal size, the, the lamina propria and the epithelium, and we have a lot of keratinized mucosa. You can look at another case, inlay graft, 10 years later, here we are. And now I can go, just another case, look at this, some inlay graft in between, and then it starts growing. And I, this is a very difficult case. You know, we had, there was a, an accident, the orthokinetic surgeon built up some bone. I did the inlay graft on the palatal side here, you can see, and mm -hmm. we managed to, well, it's not good, but it was, it, we improved this soft tissue, but the inlay <laughs> grafts are here. So do the graft uh, grow or do they give some information? Can you see the result? Ah, so, so the later. soft tissue game was, uh, was on yeah, the it's here, side. but the, the grafts are here. And now I make it even more confusing for everybody because we don't know what, what's going on. This is a case where they did augmentation as a new bone. I closed the flap, but you can see, this is how we lose the keratinized mucosa. So a second stage procedure, there's no graft, no soft tissue graft. I just pushed the, the keratinized mucosa from palatal towards bottle, buckle, mm -hmm. from palatal to a buckle. You can see from here to here, we regain the keratinized mucosa as Isabella just asked how we do it. So. This is one of the technique, no graft. This is how I started once. This is the result of the bone and soft tissue augmentation. And here we go, 13 years later. 
Do I, does anybody understand what's going on? I don't. So I, I guess, Uli, this is a, a call for science tonight, right? You say, I see this right. happen in my clinics. I see this on a single case very rarely, but in the more complex yeah. cases, it happens. It, it seems, if I look at the different photos, that only like after more than 12 years, it really starts to happen, right? Uh, yes. I can more or less, yeah, eh? yeah, just, just or less. By, by looking at the numbers in your cases. Yes, and you're and right. you say, I, I, I yeah. have no clue why or what is causing this. Yes, and I think it's very interesting to talk about this topic because many clinicians said bone is not important. We augment a lot of soft tissue. And I'm wondering whether these case, how these cases look like after 10, 15, 20 years, because if it happens like this, they don't look good. And I can, I, and it makes us something else thinking. I think uh, if we look at this case, because then we might understand why many of the cases they look good over twenty years, but maybe it's not because of the bone of the uh, on the soft tissue being stable. But maybe we have changes. If you look at this case where we did bone augmentation, you know there was not in the bone at all. However, we damaged the soft tissue. We have a lot of bone. I recreated the soft tissue with graft. That mm -hmm. was in ninety ninety four. Now, if you look at the case, this is, let's focus, I can show you each one, but let's focus on the first premolar. No bone augmented the bone. This is how it looked like clinically. I did 3D x-rays 19 years later. So what happened with this bone? Actually, I lost more than half of the augmented bone. I think we can see this. If we, It's not clear what we see on, on the 3D x-ray, but for sure, I don't have my, let's say, four millimeter bone anymore. So it shrinks. Mm -hmm. Let's look how the volume looks like after 19 years. Uh, similar, right? Well, you, you think it should be similar. Oh. We have more. Soft tissue grows. We have scar tissue. So that makes us thinking, if I go back to a case like this, where we did bone augmentation, soft tissue augmentation, and you look at the smile line after 20 years, it's perfect. But maybe, if I look at the case before, maybe if I lose a lot of bone, and they gain the volume thanks to soft tissue growing. We don't know. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, it's a game. Maybe that's the key to why, why cases still look good if we do some soft tissue graft. We don't know. It's confusing. You don't know yet. Exactly, right. This, yes. this taps into uh, the, the second half of uh, Stefan Beans's question, and he's reiterating it in the live chat. He says, yeah, very right. confusing, predictable indeed. But what should we focus on in the future he says and in his prize question he also said how can we how can we where should our research aim at yes yeah, stefan and he is at the university of zurich and he can do this research and it would be very interesting to look at the result i think when you know the problem is i don't know whether he has enough time to do it you need a lot of time if you look at the clinical experience we need a lot of time it's really interesting depends on on the type of graph do we include periosteum can be one question. And if we have a periosteum, I don't know. Sometimes I place my graph periosteum upside down, down, and up. I don't know. I don't know. Does this have an influence? Is it important which surface do you, superficially? Do we take it superficially? Do we have lamina propria included or not? Does it make a difference whether we have fat glandulas included? We don't, we don't know all these questions. I think there are so many questions, but I think it would be nice if Stefan could start answering these questions and uh, give me the answer in 20 years. I, I, well, in dog models, everything goes a little bit faster, Stefan, so you can give me the answer earlier. It's, yeah, it's, so basically to round that up, beyond yeah. Stefan, you say what what we what we should need in the in the in the field of soft tissue grafting and soft tissue augmentation is a, a more structured research approach of the different factors and and how they perhaps play a role in the long term outcome. That yeah, that, maybe, that is your call we, to action. Yeah, maybe we you know the, the scientists should start actually. How is the healing? You know, that, that maybe it's just the first and most important thing. What really happens if you place a graft? What remains? Yeah. What what uh, resorbs of, of, of what we place there? We, we I don't think we know that. At least I don't know. And exactly. I think we have to really start with basic. And it would be very interesting to, to get all these answers. I would be very interested. I'm not sure what Stefan's agenda was tonight. He now says thank you with a big smile. So maybe he takes his talk <laughs> to some people who need to approve for his research. See, only Grenda says that I need to do this. Oh, well, you know, I, um, I discussed this with Stefan earlier. I know. All right. All right. Let me, let me throw research. you a few more uh, viewer questions. Um, Safia Khan, I, I think you more or less already answered her question, but she said, 
can minor heart tissue deficiencies after implant placement be compensated with soft tissue grafts or is it not stable enough over a long time? Well, I think we just saw something about that, but- Let, 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 me, you... let me make a comment on this. You know, we always discuss is soft tissue enough? Do we need bone? I think the morphology of the defect is very important. If you have a mm. single tooth replacement and you have enough bone, mesial and distal, it's only concavity, soft tissue might be enough. If you have a flat uh, defect and, and no support from mesial or distal, I think soft tissue, it, it by itself, makes it very difficult. Like vertical augmentation you with soft tissue, we have limitations with bone, we can gain more. I think we have to, it depends on the, the morphology of the defect. Exactly, it, you, we cannot generally speak about that, but it, it depends on what, what we would like to do and what we would like to uh, design. Um, another question from Vic, Victor Fedina. He writes, do you, so this is about your experience and your preferences, do you use shielding technique in combination with soft tissue grafting? No, I don't. Okay. I yeah. There are many techniques I never used that might be successful, so I cannot answer this question because I have no experience. Clear. A little bit more about timing from Pojan Kuo. After soft tissue grafting and submerging the implant, how long should we wait to implant, uncover, and place the healing abutment? I will exactly four weeks. It exactly might... four weeks. Always four weeks. I have my standard procedure and I will follow it. I'm, I'm a strict guy. And if the patient comes back and the soft tissue did not heal yet, it's wise to send him back and wait another three, two, three, four weeks. It depends on the case. Exactly. You say most times four weeks is enough weeks. and I can always make a new appointment. Almost if, every uh, case if a... is great after four weeks. If you don't create the failure. Yeah, exactly. I can tell you. Oh, let me. Tell I me know. I, yes. I know. It's it's one of our uh, open uh, points tonight. Do you, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Do you still feel the energy if we if we run a bit over time? I think. To, uh, I show think us it's... a little bit about uh, what we do when we run into failures yeah. and how to save them. It's so important that we show this as well. You know, if we give lecture and show only great cases, that's never fair. We all have okay. failures, and it has to be. I, I try to. I try to find a. Let me. It, 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 it's a must. Exactly. To talk about uh, by now we've kind of figured out how we uh, kind of uh, work around the screen sharing option as well let's just keep it, yeah, in, uh, it. in the let editing me... mode and uh, see what happens we'll test it uh, i hope our audience it. stays I'm with coming, us and i go here and yeah it worked as we did before right it worked in the beginning so i'm, I'm not sure what happened why we lost it over time but uh let's uh Shall yeah, I do, we it? do it like this we do it like, like this, this. Yes. i think it's, it's better okay i think it's safe yes so first okay. of all complications I complication why do we see can see complications i think we have to understand the, the healing process you know if we do bone augmentation to compare the healing process is only here and if we mobilize the flap tremendously and it shakes around there's no problem because the blood supply never comes from a membrane we use so the healing process is only here this has to be perfectly stable and the suture have to be tension free that's great if we do the same with soft tissue, and I, I have seen many cases where we mobilize too much and the graft is not perfectly stable and during healing it can, it can move around, we interrupt the blood supply all the time and then we have failures. That's a very important thing. So we should not have tension on the sutures, but on the other hand, we should not mobilize the flap in a way that during healing it shakes around. What happens? And this is the failure. It's not my own failure. I'm very grateful for, for my colleague. He gave me the pictures. <laughs> Normally, I want to show my own failures, but it's so nice to show you. Look at where we started. Scar tissue makes everything difficult. It is a difficult case. Yeah. And, Message uh, from earlier on. For sure, he did a good, good, good uh, procedure. However, if I show you, I go this. This is how it looks like after 10 days. This is horrible. Now, the question is what to do. And if I ask these questions, if I give a course, however, most of the people say, well, leave it and wait. And look okay. what happens if you just wait, remove the suture and wait. Maybe you can eliminate the necrotic tissue, but leave the rest. It happens that you get more scar tissue, even more scar tissue. It's terrible. And it's almost not possible to get he, rid of it. Here's the famous four weeks, I see. Yeah? So yeah. Uh, they come back this after four weeks. Yeah. yeah. And you know, this is all epithelium going underneath these flaps. So it, you can hardly get rid of. Now I show you my own failure, which it was a little bit clever how I solve it. However, I don't want to show that I'm better than others, but it's documented. So bone augmentation you already need. 
no, nice bone. I do my soft tissue augmentation, nice soft tissue graft. Here is the closure. This is eight days later, not four weeks. Sorry, that's wrong. Eight days later. Look at this. It's a dramatic thing. What do you do? Yeah. There's only one right thing to do. Immediately eliminate everything. Raise the flap. Everything has to go out because the problem is here. You have epithelium undergrowing the flap. You eliminate it. You eliminate the epithelium. You raise the flap. You close the flap. And then you wait. Here, I wait six, six weeks. Don't leave any necrotic tissue there and not an open flap. The open flap is dramatic because you have scar tissue. And now just, I can- Just to understand, Uli, is this, is this go back to start or is this trying to save a little bit of the soft tissue graft or do, do you just clear the entire site? Go back to start. It's exactly. not about augmentation. It's about uh, find a solution for the big problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Forget the volume, forget anything. Exactly. Make sure that you don't get scar tissue. That's the worst mm -hmm. thing. And then mm -hmm. I can augment again, and then it works. Look in a year, you can see this failure ended up with this result. Why? Because I removed the necrotic tissue immediately. This is the two-year result. So my message, one of my messages is to avoid something like this. If you have a very thin soft tissue like here, don't raise a flap and do a soft tissue graft. There is no blood supply. Find another technique. For example, here, find the technique with the tunneling. Look at this. This is a perforation here. Do a tunneling. Don't interrupt the blood supply here. If you do a, a, a flap procedure in like a super tissue graft, this will never survive. So look at the soft tissue and choose the right technique appropriately. Here you can see this is this graft. This is how it heals. There was a perforation. Don't make a flap. You will have a failure. And then later on, we have to work, wait very long with such tissue. Look at this. I placed the temporary and I wait six months before I finalize the case, but I could solve the problem. So very important. Well, help me understand. Why did you wait so long? Well, if you have very thin soft tissue and a place of graft underneath and you have reduced blood supply, like, like here, you know, it takes time. It takes mm -hmm. time. Soft tissue healing in this case, because you know you don't start with healthy soft tissue, it takes a lot of time until it, until it matures. And it yeah, it comes back as you can see here if you take your time. Another okay. thing, maybe we can talk about this. You know, if you have a failure, something like that, you have an, this is a cover screw. Let Mother Nature work for you. I'm, I'm I don't work, like to work too much. So there's <laughs> one thing you have to do: remove the cover screw. And Mother yeah. Nature is here. Look at the tissue here. And then you wait until it closes almost by itself. And if you have a tiny little hole, yes, now I have a lot and, of- And just looking at the small numbers, this is three weeks you show us. Yes, three weeks. That goes very quickly, very quickly. Well, I have to start, look, there's a lot of soft tissue potential around. Yeah. You wait three weeks and it's almost closed. And now I have good blood supply on both sides. Now I can go on. Now I can place my graft and do it and, and, and go on and finalize the case like this. This is how I started. But- if you have complications, look at the tissue, potential of the tissue, or maybe Mother Nature does most of the work for you. This is also good. So I think it was important to, to share uh, also these failures. I think so too. We see a lot of virtual applause coming up. Uh, we see Victor Fedinha saying thank you a lot. Po Jung Kuo also big thumbs up virtually. So I think it's a lot appreciated uh, that you shared this uh, with us as well. Um, with that, looking also at the clock, we've been uh, chatting for over an hour already, Uli. I think it feels that we can talk so much longer about this. Yeah. Well, the good thing is you and I have a next meeting planned already in our diaries. And I think that all of our viewers tonight can actually be there with us if they want. This is my little lead out to a save the date if you haven't done so. Make sure you meet Uli and me at uh, September 29 to October 1st in Geneva. That's also in Switzerland, where the EAO Congress will take place with a wonderful theme which is called uniting nations through innovations now who doesn't want to be part of that and uh Uli, i would like to uh, set the appointment that we uh, uh drink a cup of coffee there and talk even more cool. about uh, all your experience in soft tissue grafting and uh hopefully uh, a lot of our viewers will join us as well hopefully physically and maybe there will be uh, some online stuff there as well Uli, if there's one thing that people, when they wake up tomorrow and go back to their clinics, that they remember from this session, what do you, what do you hope they really do different? Learn, no, not different. Many people talk about soft tissue grafting and they don't do it. 
learn how to do it. It's big fun to do it. It's a nice work and it helps really a lot to get the perfect result. Learn how to do soft tissue, autogenous soft tissue grafting. It's a nice procedure. Learn it. That's my message. And thank <laughs> learn you. Learn and dive into it. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Uli. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your compliments. And thank you to all our active viewers tonight, throwing us a little bit, of course, every now and then, but we kind of worked our way through to uh, make sure that you had a, a good learning opportunity tonight. And if you want to learn more, make sure you subscribe to the EEO YouTube channel right now. You'll be the first to know when a new live EEO Just Ask is scheduled or when new videos, free education are uploaded to the EEO channel as well. And if you like this kind of uh, online education, maybe you should definitely consider to become an EAO member because then you also get access to the EAO library, which is full with scientific studies, case videos, clinical demonstrations, and a lot more. So you can become a better and better implant dentist as well. Um, Having said that, I wish you a very good evening. I'm looking, I wish you a very good summer break. We'll be back at the first Monday of September, same time, same place here on the EO channel. And a month later, I hope to see you all in Geneva for the EO Congress. Thanks for now. See you next time.